the mayor of Cadiz, your hometown, for six years. So I presume that you were a member of a political party. When I was mayor, your honor, I was not a member of a political party. I, we led, my family led the campaign for Cory Aquino. We had this Cory Aquino for president movement. Yes. yes, it was not a political party. And so when I was appointed, it was the Bishop of Bacolod, Monsignor Fortich, yes. and the president of a planters association who uh -huh. asked President Aquino to appoint me. Uh, it was not a political party. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I really did not owe my appointment to a political party. And these were very extraordinary times, Your Honor. Yes. You know, in 1986. That's how I became mayor, uh, Bishop of Akola. I see. Uh, okay. Now somebody handed to me some questions from the Twitter. They're asking, requesting that these be questions be asked. No? How do you deal with influence peddlers? <laughs> this is the question from the Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I like that question. When I was commissioner, Your Honor, for nine months. And you know, I'm a very friendly person. Yeah. And I said, well, kahit sino pwedeng pumasok dyan, sig bawal lang cigarette vendor, because I don't like the smell of smoke. Vendors, anybody, lawyers, anybody, you give them an appointment, you record, your honor, yeah. and let them in. Especially the lawyers, kasi hanap buhay po nila yan. Yeah, At saka yung mga lawyers, just joking, bigyan nyo ng 30 minutes, kasi billable hours yan. <laughs> Okay. So, I'm saying, Your Honor, that I know how to say no. I can be courteous, I can be receptive, I will listen, but I know when to say no. And lahat to yan sila, who asked something and something, because there were so many cases there on money claims, a lot of money, contractors, yes. etc. Yeah. Standard, standard answer. Uh, is that already with the legal department? Yes. Uh, when did you file it like that? Okay, so uh, I'm going to read your file, compañero, once it is in the agenda. But one is, if it's not yet in the agenda, I cannot read that file because I will be favoring you. That's against the Ombuds, the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Yeah. Right? So I said, the best way to eradicate this influence peddling is really to have a set of rules that should be followed. Okay, if you are 900 something in the logbook, I cannot in insert you so that you'll be agenda next month because you're my sorority sister. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the 998 have to be decided first. So the answer is they have to be answered. They have to be resolved first, right? So, so that nobody gets ahead of other people. You know, Your Honor, this is the Philippines. Everybody has something to say to somebody that they know. But as I said, when you have strength of character and you have discipline, you can say no. The judges can say no. And especially if we are judges, you know, that's a, that's a drastic lifestyle change. Huh? Yes. Drastic lifestyle change. Because if you're a justice of the Supreme Court, you cannot anymore have lunch with your classmates. I mean, but I suppose I can always say, uh, don't appear in, 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 you know, in the Supreme Court. <laughs> or if you do, I might have to inhibit. So, I'm saying, Your Honor, all justices have, must have a social life. We have family life. Influence peddlers are everywhere. But if people know your reputation, they cannot sell you. Sino dyan makakasabi na si Bing Guanson? Kilala ko yan. Kaya ko yan, pre. Ibibenta niya ako? Nobody will buy. Because they know my reputation. I think, Your Honor, that judges should build that reputation. Para wala ng influence peddler. Uh, you cannot stop them from doing what they're doing. But you can say no. And you can say no in a way na hindi na talaga sila uulit po. Talagang hindi na sila uulit. Whether they are close to you or not. When I was mayor, I had relatives. No. Quitting? No. Drugs? No. Illegal logging? No. 
Kaya naman, Your Honor, as I said, buti na lang, nag-mayor ako nung bata pa ako. <laughs> yeah. Kasi matapang pa po ako nun ng todo, todo. <laughs> Okay, the second question, Attorney Guanzon, this is really especially ano, sent for you to answer. What are your views on the dynamics of politics and justice in the Philippines? Let's see, very that must be a political point. science student yeah. from UP. Uh, yeah, from, a certain <laughs> Ro, from a certain Rowell. Yeah. Politics and? Uh, and? Politics and justice in the Philippines. I think that uh, uh, the political is always in the environment. Even for us, women's rights advocates, the personal is political. So uh, if you mean to say, if the, 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 the professor means to ask, how is politics related to justice? Uh, there is, of course, uh, some relation. Because uh, 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 the appointment, of course, goes to the office of the president. Uh, even appointments to quasi-judicial offices like constitutional commissions pass through the politicians in Congress, etc. There's always some relation. That in the administration of justice, I think that politics should be excluded in the administration of justice. Because if people have to aspire for an ideal, that would be the ideal of justice. And although we live in reality, in a political world, I think the administration of justice should be above politics. <laughs> Thank you, Justice. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. You can drink your water. I, Rita, that, that's yours. It's not yet open. Is it open? Open, ba? You get, you give her a new but a new one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you also. Your Honours, uh, Associate Justice Maria Cristina Cornejo of the Sandigan Bayan is next to be interviewed. Okay. Good morning, Justice Cornejo. Good morning, for Justice. Okay. Our record shows that you have been interviewed by the JBC, first in connection with your application for yes. slot in the Sandigan Bayan. Yes, po. And secondly, la, uh, in 2012, in connection, for your, uh, in connection with your application for a post also of Associate Justice in yes, the Supreme po. Court. Yes. And in those two occasions, you gave a brief statement about yourself. Do you want to, to give another statement in addition to what you have already given? Um, see, ma'am, my, my life is unexciting. Eh? So <laughs> let me just start that uh, I'm a graduate of, uh, I'm an orphan. I'm a graduate of USD. I took my AB in USD, and I took my Bachelor of Laws in USD, and then I first entered government service as a special counsel in the city of Manila, and then I got to promote to get promoted as assistant fiscal also of the city of Manila, and then uh, I became MTC judge where I stayed for 15 years as an MTC judge, and then I won the judicial excellence, and I became RTC. And I stayed in the RTC for eight years. After eight years, I tried Sandigan Bayan. I never want to be appointed to the CA, ma'am, because uh, you'll be sent outside. I have a lot of people to support here in Manila. 
So I tried, I think I applied in the Sending and Bind for three times until I got it. And then I'm, I'm in the Sending and Bind. I've been in the Sending and Bind for four years and two months. Two months. And uh, what else? Um, I am. Ah, Mom, one thing I can assure you, I, I've never been really interested in personalities. When I was in the MTC, hindi naman ho controversial yan. But when I got to the RTC, that's the time talaga I really parang shun myself from, I don't read newspapers. I read yung ano lang, headlines lang, kasi baka kako, there will come time that the case will come before me. Gusto ko, when I get into the uh, to the case, it's I, know, I am rid of any biases or anything, and with more reason now in the Sandigan Bayan headlines and uh, and now more on artista po entertainment and puzzle. <laughs> Opo. Uh, Opo. Honorable Maria Milagos Fernand, kayo sa will ask you some questions. Opo. Uh, thank you, Justice Sigmund. Uh, good morning, uh, good Justice morning. Corneo. Um, I found it interesting the fact that not only were you a uh, centennial awardee for the judicial excellence, no, for judicial excellence, but also for Lincoln Bayan, which is, I know, the highest uh, award that you can receive as a public servant uh, by the Civil Service Commission. I'm just wondering, since I noticed that this was during your stint as a judge, what was a the particular um, recognition that was given to you so, such that you were granted this award? Mom, the, the truth is, I didn't know about it. Sa totoo po, I didn't know about it, and then I was uh, just informed by uh, Miss Eden Candelaria, Eden Candelaria, uh, that I was the one chosen to be, to be nominated by the Supreme Court. That's it. And then I won it. Yun lang po. I didn't know. I didn't know what happened. So you were not required to submit anything that would. Show I don't remember having. I submitted sa judicial excellence po, but I don't remember having submitted anything sa. I don't remember po having submitted. But you don't also recall what was it in the citation of the Lincoln Bayan Award that you were being recognized for. Um, uh, the reason I'm asking is usually this is this award I know is given to to those from. Um, executive uh, and uh, legislative uh, but, uh, uh, agencies. Honesty, integrity, something like that. It's, it's just short. It's it's hanging in my the wall of my room. Uh, but I haven't really. Uh, what's important is I got it, and it's God given. I think. Now, perhaps many are asking. Now you are already in the Sandigan Bayan and. Um, it is expected that uh, there will be interesting times ahead in the Sandigan yeah, yes, Bayan. Yes, Why would you consider leaving the court now and aspire for the Supreme Court? Mom, because uh, I'm now 63. And as it is, I s believe that it's every lawyer's dream to be in the Supreme Court. And I would want to take advantage of a vacancy. And I know I can better serve in a higher degree. and. Uh, um, I'll be in the judiciary for about less than seven years already and want to contribute something. I know that it is something that I can contribute uh, in, in a higher level. Could you be more specific as to what this something is that you I think? really don't know. It's, it's, uh, the, uh, it, it all depends on what case uh, uh, would come. And, uh, you know, Mom, I, I believe that I'm so we, we're all supposed to be guided by the Holy Spirit, and uh, that is what I'm banking on. Uh, even in my cases, in my, in the by Ah, by the way, I forgot. Uh, can I give my I know for the Sandigan Bayan po? Uh, that I've had 15 cases, but for decision, um, my affirmance is 100%. Uh, for because the rest have not been appealed or is sent, and now I have pending four for appeal and one for certiorari. Uh, so far, I think it's good, it's okay. But I'm really not in my decisions. I'm not really verbose. I go straight to the point. Now, um, 
I understand in the Supreme Court you have to be verbos. I'm not so sure. <laughs> I'm not so sure. Uh, but I really do not know a definite answer to your question. I just am guided. That's what I believe in. Do you have any anecdotes about how you deal with your court personnel? But from you, how would you characterize how you deal with your court personnel as a trial court judge and now as a, an appellate court um, judge? I treat them as family kasi po eh. We, we, have, we always bond because uh, particularly in the MTC where I stayed for 15 years, talagang parang family mo na yan eh. And uh, in RTC I stayed for eight years. At least po, even now, I brought one lawyer eh. From, from, the, from the RTC to the Sandigan because sabi nila, you need somebody you can trust. Uh, so I brought my lawyer and uh, we're only, what, five? Uh, because my other lawyer transferred to the COA for a permanent position. But so far, I think I've, I've been fair. I've treated them fairly. And even if yung matagal na po from the MTC, RTC, they still come to me. And... Uh, no, for any problem or anything. So which means that I believe that I've bonded well with them. Um, the records also show that, uh, and I think you divulge in your personal data sheet, that you were once reminded to be more cautious. In this case, decided in 2005. Ah, and that, that Yes, that has long been dismissed, but I just want to find out uh, from that experience, what have you learned and how has this affected how you deal with um, cases mm. and litigants now? Mom, that was a case where uh, I think that was uh, more culture. Ah, because the accused there for initially did not submit to, to the court for purposes of posting bail. She went to, is this the one lock up? This is actually uh, with respect to uh, holding the trial in no, not trial, arraignment. Arraignment. Yes, okay. yes. Because she, she initially, she said she, she doesn't want to come. I was in the other building. Makati lang po eh. I was in the other building. And, but she, she surrendered to the mayor. She's from San Loyata eh. I'm not so sure. This is the Virata case. Yeah, Virata. Dr. Cora Virata. And then when I said, she has to come because she has to post bail. So I stood ground and she went. But when it can, came to actual proceedings, she didn't want to come. And it's because she's sick. So if she's sick, we're going there <laughs> to arraign her if she's sick. Because she has a lot of complaints. So if she's sick, we're going there to uh, That's, I think, what, uh, what she said, uh, what the Supreme Court said to be more cautious. Because I was insisting that she be right. So that we can proceed with the trial. What have you learned from that experience? Mm. Well, because there are certain considerations that my uh, connection po eh. So, uh, what, to be more cautious? So, more cautious. I didn't really take it against anybody. I didn't really even, it didn't even sink into my mind because I knew that I was doing the right thing and I've always been cautious in dealing with people. Now, moving on, uh, we've noticed that you have had 25 years uh, 25 experience teaching. I don't <laughs> teaching. Teaching. And um, I'm just wondering, do you think that our current uh, legal education system actually encourages uh, the production of not only competent but ethical lawyers? Um, but in UST, ma'am, I can, in UST, they have more legal ethics subjects. Oh, po, po. They're trying to mold these people to become not only lawyers but Christian Catholic lawyers. So, pinupukpuk po sila talaga. Uh, I teach in other schools also, but I really don't know their policy. But in UST, pinupukpuk talaga, I really don't know yung, yung, pardon, yung values. Actually, I, I'm very proud to say that when I graduated from UST, even 
up to now, I still maintain, yeah, yun konti pa lang huno ng legal ethics, but uh, I, I think, I, I believe that I maintained it, the values which, which have been taught to me in USC. But of course, also in the same Rita, where, where I grew up. It's a Catholic school. You have been a jurist for 26 years, more 26. than uh, us. Ah, okay. <laughs> At least that's what your records say. Anyway, but um, I'm, I'm curious if you feel that um, the current rules also, do we take to task lawyers who do falsehood in affidavit? Falsehood or, you yeah, know, okay. in, in affidavits, are, do, are we required you know, to, to be answerable enough in order to avoid, you know, the delay in the administration of justice? Ma'am, or do you feel that there is a, a, as a judge? Yes, um, if I may be continue, uh, allowed to continue. Or do you feel that there are changes that need to be made in um, our rules of court in order to ensure more accountability by lawyers to ensure that the, the truth and justice is apparent? Oh, for accountability, I think there are now rules, no? Um, for example, yung bang, uh, the rules on civil procedure, oh, there were amendments in 2000, 2007, making it uh, yung certiorari po ba, triple the cost to be borne by, uh, by the party as well as the lawyer. That's one. But uh, I haven't really encountered sanctions um, that are imposed on erring lawyers, except for those for violation of the Code of Professional Responsibility. But I think they're not really um, what uh, heavy as to deter. Because let's face it, a lot of lawyers are really too soy. Uh, just to win cases, they really, you know, um, they resort to all kinds. Uh, but of course, there are lawyers who resort uh, because they believe it's, it's what they should do. But uh, as far as sanctions are concerned, I think there should be more sanctions. But before these sanctions are actually imposed, they ought to be a uh, real uh, investigation to be conducted. Because kawawa naman po, the lawyer, if you know, we simply act on uh, more on suspicion because, uh, let's say, Nagawana niya ngayon yan, and then it's not necessary. It does not necessarily follow that he'll do it again. He's guilty of this again. Ipuba. Recently, um, if you did not read that particular uh, headline, uh, Congress uh, submitted a proposal which would um, prolong the prescription period, extend rather the, the prescription period of uh, graph cases cognizable by the Sandigan Bayan or Sandigan Bayan cases in general from 15 to 30 years. What are your views on that? From 15 to 30? Yes. In all cases? Well, in certain cases, perhaps. But how would how do you feel about I don't that? Think, I, I don't think that's, that's proper. It's 15 to 30? Why do you feel that it is not proper? I think tama na po yung 15 eh. But 30, parang it will, I think, go against one the, uh, to, to expedite the disposition of cases because there are a lot, on the other side, there are a lot of, uh, uh, as I said, uh, ways by which the lawyers can skew the prescriptive period uh, because it starts to run uh, upon, uh, 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 upon commencement, no, no. It starts to run on the date of discovery of, uh, because, uh, but, uh, no, but it is a special law. Uh, it starts to run on the date, uh, as provided for the special law. Uh, if there's a provision, I'm not really, key, uh, not really uh, uh, knowledgeable of the prescriptive period. If there's a law that says it's, it's commenced on the day of the institution of the judicial proceedings, that the prescription period should run from that date. But if there is no, so it's from the date of discovery of the crime. 
um, how up to date are you with respect to uh, developments in legal, um, the legal profession, particularly with respect to the liberalization of um, or the free practice of law within the ASEAN region? No, no, I'm not. I'm sorry, I'm not. Familiar. But uh, what are your thoughts on this? If you are to allow foreign lawyers to engage in the practice of law here in the, in the Philippines. There are more there are more than enough lawyers here in the Philippines to deal with Philippine concerns. So why allow foreign lawyers to come here? They should stick to their law. To the <laughs> if this is a commitment made through um, the uh, being a signatory you know, to um, trade agreements which allow the free uh, practice of professions. Oh, if there is an agreement, so who are I to question that? But as far as I'm concerned, it would be best for for the legal profession here in the Philippines to be participated in, to be run by Filipino lawyers. My final question, Justice. Um, I presume that you feel that you would be, your services would best be put to use in the Supreme Court. That then in the Sandigan Bayan, that's why you're aspiring for the position. What would be your major contribution that perhaps you can do in the Supreme Court, which otherwise you cannot do in the Sandigan Bayan? Mom, basically it's, uh, what, only this is in the higher level where uh, final night, court of last resort, na, so you can best express your, uh, best express your opinion uh, you're given the opportunity to actually create your doctrine. Uh, that's what uh, one justice told me. <laughs> and that's, I think, is uh, because this is a final uh, subject to, of course, uh, uh, subject to discussion with the rest, uh, if it's an end bank and uh, with the rest of the divisions. So I think uh, it would be better in the higher level. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Bob. That was my last question. Thank you, Bob. Good luck. Thank you, Justice Lagman. Okay. Uh, Honorable Sedini Mejia will also ask some questions. Uh, thank you, Justice Lagman. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Justice Cornejo. In your application letter to the JBC, you stated that uh, with your 26 years of service, you believe that you have acquired um, necessary knowledge, training, and experience that sufficiently prepared you for a higher position in the judiciary. Does this imply that you're in favor of more senior appointees to the judicial posts? More senior as far as age is concerned? Yes, yes uh, and, and ex experience. Yes, Paul. Um, because what's more, uh, more senior, uh, not only in age, but of course in experience in the judiciary. Like for example, ako na nga po. Uh, I stayed in the MTC for 15 years, and I stayed in the RTC for eight years and now in the Sandigan Bayan for four years. Different jurisdictions, wider, although the Sandigan Bayan, a limited jurisdiction because we're more into uh, government officials, but mas ano po yung experience, experience, more inexperience. So not necessarily the chronological age. Uh, what is your take on trial by publicity? Do you think uh, some judges are indeed swayed by the media when they, for example, um, uh, cover a particular celebrated case. Uh, but we're not supposed to, I think, I think the judges are not supposed to uh, deal with media when they are handling lalo na controversial cases. That is my point, boy. When I Particularly when I started in the RTC, talagang I shunned myself. In fact, when I was in the MTC, I, I handled this case of, tapos na naman po, can I discuss? Um, Princess Revilla case? Yan. Where yung yung nag -ano siya ng maids? Okay. So they were telling me, this is, this I've been in the art, in the MTC for, what? Uh, then, 13 years, this is your chance. Sabi niya, mamimedia ka. I was executive judge then. And then this is because no, sabi ko, what what chance? Because I will be, I will get to the RTC in God's time. You know, paniniwala ko eh. I will get to the RTC in God's time. So sabi ko, i-raffle yan. Eh kaso minala so, i-raffle, na-raffle sa akin. 
So that's it. I, I think we should shun eh. Kasi iba na ho ang sa judiciary eh. As the examiner of criminal law during the 2011 bar exams, did you see any areas for improvement as regards to the conduct of the Philippine bar examinations? And what areas of the bar exam do you think should be uh, considered as areas of reform? I think, because uh, last time, uh, w that, uh, it was the pioneer in, when I was uh, examiner in criminal law, where we had uh, more on MCQs, and then, and how, uh, and then the second part was how, yung essay, on how they are. I think it's a good uh, practice uh, because uh, I got the point. Eh. Uh, yun hong sa ano on how they are able to express in writing. Tapos ito naman analytical eh, sa MCQ. I think it should have been given uh, more time to to actually be felt, uh, to act, the value of which to be actually uh, understood. Because uh, I think yung ano, analytical and then essay eh, on how you're able to, mga questions, so yung, uh, how you're able to resolve an issue or something. But I think now it's going back to the usual. Justice, you have also gained the reputation among your law students uh, of being one of the best reviewers in remedial law. Considering that you were also one of the members of the Committee on Judicial Reforms in uh, remedial law from 2005 to 2006, what areas of remedial law do you think to be, need to be reformed to make the current rules more responsive to the legal practice? Um, for example, the civil procedure Civil procedure was amended as of 1997 pa. And uh, from 1997 now to 2014, I think there are some areas that need to be amended further. And then uh, the rules on criminal procedure amended as of 2000. It's now 2014. Marami na rin pong ano. For example, yung... Ay, sabagay, wala pa dyan yung judicial affidavits, as far as criminal cases is concerned. And uh, there are certain areas, um, uh, yung pong ano, yung uh, modes of discovery in criminal procedure, these are not actually uh, enshrined separately in a separate rule, like in civil procedure, Rule 23, 24, 25, deposition, pending action, before action. Diyan po, interspersed eh. Isa lang yun, production and examination of... Uh, material evidence in the possession of the prosecution. Remember, prosecution ng po yan. And then yung uh, deposition, there's actually no word of deposition used in criminal procedure. Ang ginagamit dyan is conditional examination of witnesses for the prosecution for the defense. Now, yung mga cases po, ini-explain na lang. So, eh, from 2000 to 2014, there ought to be, again, certain amendments. And yung evidence, evidence. Uh, I think, I've not really gone over, but I think yung evidence, it's a given the, uh, given the procedure now, it, or the presentation of evidence would not have to be uh, uh, amended to jibe with the rules. Yung nga judicial affidavit, hindi po ba now judicial affidavit, will now constitute as a direct examination. Eh, yun sa rules on evidence, nakalagay doon direct examination, cross-examination. So you have to go through, a witness has to go through the direct, cross, with direct, recross. But uh, to, to, to abbreviate, uh, pinasok na nga po yung judicial affidavits. But uh, overall, I think evidence is okay. And special proceedings, yan o talaga parang, parang dead law na yan kasi ang dami-dami nang tinanggal dyan eh. You know, as far as the family court is concerned, voluntary dissolution of the corporation, etc., which have been removed. So, ang um, parang, ano na lang ho dyan, um, um, remaining would be yung, yung mga settlement of estate, yung adoption is been amended, no? 
And then, yung mga, ay, hospitalization of insane persons. Yan. Yung kailangan, i-adopt na niya. Kaya si, the, of course, we know naman, so many insane around, so, nandiyan, kailangan, nandiyan pa rin yan. No. And, uh, adoption, settlement. Ah, change of name. Meron ng 9048. Change of name, cancellation, correction of entry. So, uh, in, uh, it, uh, it, it, it's now made between administrative 9048 and judicial. That would be my final question. We have some Twitter questions, but I would defer to uh, Justice Lag Lagman for these uh, questions. Thank you and good luck, Thank uh, Justice Cornejo. Thank you, okay. Justice Thank you. Justice Cornejo, good morning again. Apo. Actually, uh, I did not intend to ask you any question because Apo. we have interviewed you quite uh, extensively Apo. for several times already. However, we received some questions from the Twitter. Apo. I Twitter. Yeah, Twitter, okay. So okay. I will ask Palang you. Ganun. So, <laughs> sige, I will ask you this question. From po Pauline Tamaray, uh, what are your thoughts on the decriminalization of libel in connection with the SC's administrative circular number 8, that's 2008? My thoughts on decriminalization, the I think, de, 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 de. I wouldn't, I'm not in favor of decriminalization, but eh. Why? Um, I think yung imprisonment eh, would serve still as a deterrent. Kasi pagka po gagawin yung civil lang, only damages, it won't, it yeah. won't really curtail. It won't really deter. Yun lang po ang thoughts ko. So you want to, it to stay as it oh, is? Opo. Okay. Uh, as a Sandigan Bayan, uh, Sandigan Bayan uh, Associate Justice, how do you deal with influence peddlers? How will I deal? Influence Opo, I don't deal with them po eh. Kasi oh, talaga. You just don't. Uh, I don't. I really, kasi ma'am, mm. when I get to the office. Tarado na agad ang pinto. Opo. <laughs> talaga po. Ang nakakapasok lang po, yung mga magdadala ng records. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But I really don't. They, even when I'm outside, in fact, yan pang pidaf na yan. Kasi, oh, anong thoughts mo dyan? Huwag na lang ho kasi baka dumating. Yeah. Gusto ko, open ng mind ko. In fact, when I was in the RTC, kahit na sa MTC, di po ba yung lawyers would come to you? They'd come from different backgrounds. Ano po? Meron big time, lalo sa Makati, big time. Tapos may dadating sa'yo from the province. Yung talagang gusto ko, hindi ko talaga, kaya I'm not concerned with personality sa'yo eh. Uh, talagang, eh, kung ano, ebidensya mo, ebidensya mo. Ganun lang po. Okay. So, another question. From Tamara again. Uh, if you will be appointed in the Supreme Court, what would you do if issues in cases filed before the court are not substantive but are of interest to the greater public? Are not you going to just dismiss it? Inter no, because mm. you have to consider everything eh, in your yeah. decision. Yeah. You don't just stick to one. I mean, one issue. Oh, po. Kasi, okay. lalo na in the Supreme Court, mm. dapat wide ang, yes. ano mo eh, ang okay. coverage of your mm. thinking. So, these are questions from the Twitter which okay. we received this morning. Ngayon ko lang nalaman may Twitter. May Twitter. <laughs> Ako, I'm not techie. Ah, ganun ba? <laughs> so, 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 that's it. I have, as I have said earlier, my Records are complete in so far as your qualifications are concerned because we have interviewed you for several times already. And on that note, I have no more questions and I wish you luck. Salamat po. Justice Cornejo. Okay. Thank you.